Welcome to the Sacagawea Interpretive Center at Sacagawea State Park in Pasco, Washington. My name is Mary, and today we're going to explore how the Lewis and Clark Expedition prepared to eat and drink on their long journey. Imagine you are preparing for a camping trip, but a camping trip where you don't know how long you're going to be gone. Potentially, it could be years. You don't know where you're going, what the weather will be like, what the terrain will be like. You don't know if you're going to find communities on your route where you can purchase extra food and supplies, or if you're going to have to bring everything you need with you in order to find food and water in the landscape when your supplies run out. These are the things Captain Meriwether Lewis and William Clark had to consider when preparing for their long journey from St. Louis to the Pacific Ocean and back. What are your favorite foods to bring on a camping trip? Do you like to roast hot dogs and marshmallows over an open fire? Or maybe you go fishing and fry up your catch for dinner each night. Well, the Lewis and Clark Expeditions captains had to consider what types of food would keep on a long journey into an unfamiliar land. They didn't have refrigeration and they didn't have the nice ice chest that we have today to keep our food cold and prevent it from spoiling. So they had to look for foods they could bring that wouldn't require a lot of special care to keep them safe to eat. They brought salted pork and ingredients like dried corn, cornmeal, flour, beans, sugar, and salt. They supplemented these supplies along the way by hunting and fishing and gathering edible plants like root vegetables and berries when they could find them. But what about when the food ran out? For these emergency situations, the Lewis and Clark Expedition brought with them the early 1800s version of an MRE, a meal ready to eat. This term comes from these pouches of food that are supplied by the US military to soldiers in the field. And today, many backcountry campers like to use these freeze-dried MREs when they're camping out in the wilderness. The expedition's version of the MRE was called portable soup. This exhibit here at the Sacagawea Interpretive Center lets visitors experience not only what the portable soup looked like, these rectangular, slightly translucent cakes, but also what it smelled like. There's a little scent pod right here, and if you visit the Interpretive Center, you can, you can inhale and get a sense of what that soup would have smelled like when it was bubbling over an open fire out on the trail. Captain Lewis purchased 193 pounds of these portable soup cakes for the expedition, and they became essential to the party's survival when they were crossing the Rocky Mountains in 1805. During that mountain crossing, there was snow on the ground, it was freezing cold, they couldn't find game to hunt, they couldn't find plants to gather and eat, so the portable soup was the lifesaver the MRE of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. When you're camping and it's cold outside, what's something you like to have to help you warm up for the day? For many people, it's a hot drink, hot cocoa, hot coffee, or hot tea. The Lewis and Clark Expedition's journals list among the supplies several types of beverages, including barrels of wine and whiskey, like this one I have behind me, as well as coffee and tea bricks. Today we think of tea as coming in these little paper bags like this one, or even in loose tea form like this right here that I have in front of me. And using this strainer, you simply make your tea by pouring hot water over it or even just steeping it directly in the pot or the mug to make your hot cup of tea. But you wouldn't want to bring loose tea leaves like this on a long journey like the Lewis and Clark expedition. They could be easily lost or spoiled or completely ruined when your boat's tipped over in the water and all of your supplies got wet, which happened a few times on the journey. So the way they transported their tea was in bricks like this one. Now tea bricks were made by grinding up tea leaves into a fine consistency and then compressing them into bricks using molds. The molds often stamped very elaborate designs on the bricks, you can see those on both sides, because these were very valuable and expensive items back in the early 1800s. 
The way you make tea with these is by chiseling or breaking off a small amount of the tea. It didn't take very much. And then you pop that right in your mug or in your teapot to make your hot cup of tea. The Lewis and Clark Expedition lists in their supplies two pounds of tea bricks, as well as a tea caddy. Now, tea caddies were special locking boxes that were used to store and transport tea bricks. And they locked not only because these were very valuable and expensive and you didn't want them to be lost or stolen, but also it kept your soldiers from sneaking an extra ration of tea without permission when they were out on the trail. Thanks for coming along today as we explore the way the Lewis and Clark expedition prepared to eat and drink on the trail. And I hope you'll join us again soon for another Lewis and Clark adventure.